The statement made by President of Burkina Faso, Captain Ibrahim Traoré, in a February interview is significant because it shows his pivotal determination to reforming the country and breaking loose from historical ties that have hindered his progress. The President's statement indicated a definitive vision and strategic planning, guiding his activities since his rise to power, defined notions of military leadership and demonstrating a planned approach to his administration. Maybe everything we've done has surprised you, hasn't it? Don't worry, more changes are on the way that may surprise you," says the President, emphasizing his commitment to establishing his ambitious plans and projects that challenge the status quo. This statement indicates a state of purpose and confidence in the direction of Burkina Faso, under his leadership, removing any worries about his ability to govern effectively. Furthermore, the President intends to break all ties that have kept us in slavery, represents a dedication to self-determination and sovereignty, projecting all forms of external control or dominance. This form of approach taken by Traoré is consistent of the country's history to colonialism and exploitation, emphasizing the value of autonomy and empowerment for Burkina and its people. The President's declaration also addresses prejudices and assumptions about the military commanders, most especially their competence and aptitude for government. The President argues his capability and competency as a leader by claiming that all actions performed before his leadership were meticulously planned and carried out irrespective of his military background. Furthermore the President's statement has surprised the West, particularly France, by introducing a new currency, indicating a dramatic shift in Burkina Faso's economic policy and international relations. This daring act is symbolic of a readiness to express economic dependence and challenge the existing arrangements that may be recognized as limitations to Burkina Faso's autonomy. Captain Ibrahim Traoré's plans to break all ties that have kept Burkina Faso and other African countries in what he calls slavery entails a significant focus and challenging the CFA franc, a currency used by 14 African countries and long referred to as a symbol of France's economic and political dominance. The CFA franc, founded in 1954 for France's African colonies, has allowed France to maintain significant control over its former colonies' monetary policies and economies. France has had great control over the CFA franc, allowing it to affect currency evaluation, monetary policy, and the money supplies form Paris in Francophone Africa. This centralized control has prevented African countries' ability to govern their economies independently and make sovereign monetary policy decisions. Furthermore France has maintained control over a good number of Francophone Africa's money reserves, mandating 100% deposits in French banks at first, then 70% and presently 50%. As a consequence of this, Francophone African governments have been unable to create or issue their own currency, thereby limiting the autonomy and monetary policy decisions without French permission and hence are required to keep a proportion of their money reserves in French banks. This arrangement has fostered a system of economic reliance and hindered the capacity of African nations to pursue autonomous economies' development plans. Captain Traoré's view of cutting links with the CFA franc reflects a broader yearning among African nations, is necessary for economic independence to bring about sovereignty and regain control over their economic destinies. Burkina Faso hopes to break free from colonial heritage by contrasting the CFA franc domination and arguing for greater autonomy in economic decision-making and monetary policy. This will lay the foundation for a more self-determined and egalitarian future. He went further to explain then from a purely practical economic standpoint, the CFA is not a beneficial system or currency for its user states, because the long-term analysis of the GDP of countries using the CFA franc, indicates that since they gained independence, none of these countries have recorded as much development as they should have if the CFA franc was sincerely for their benefit. The highest income per capita experienced so far by any of these nations was in the 1970s. Traoré further explained that the fact that the CFA franc is pegged to the euro is more detrimental to the economies of francophone countries because their exports are primarily traded in US dollars. Consequently, their predominantly commodity-based products become competitive on the worldwide market. This action limits francophone Africa's economic freedom, trapping them in the neocolonial model that promotes foreign firms over domestic companies. 
Mali tried to break free from this financial and economic turmoil by establishing its self-owned currency, the Malian France. This was one year after gaining independence in 1962, unfortunately, due to internal disagreements and France's steadfast determination not to allow any of its former colonies to achieve complete independence led to the demolition of the Malian franc and Mali was again incorporated into the CFA zone in 1984. Since then, no other francophone country has tried to break free from these economic constraints. However in 2019, Ivorian President, Alassane Ouattara and his French counterpart President Macron, issued a press statement announcing the end of the CFA as it had previously existed. According to them, the Central Bank of West African States is no longer obliged to deposit half of its foreign exchange reserves with the French government. The currency's name CFA France will be converted to ECO and France will no longer have control over its management. But then, it's 2024 and the CFA franc has not yet been changed to ECO as stated, therefore we could assume that France still maintains control over the currency. In other words nothing has happened. This is probably the reason why Niger, Mali and Burkina Faso have all agreed to pull their resources and establish a currency in common, for their confederation. In September 2023, these three junta governments formed a military alliance to pull their resources and fight against the increasing menace of these groups that have disturbed their countries for years. It did not end there. Captain Ibrahim Traore continued by saying that they had resolved to expand partnership beyond the military alliance to a full-fledged political, economic, and monetary union. He also mentioned that planning were underway to confirm a federation to combat any external danger. For months later, Niger, Mali and Burkina Faso announced their exit from the regional bloc ECOWAS, which they said had deviated from the Founding Fathers' original ideals and had become a puppet organization for the West as well as a threat to their own members. According to Traore, the next vigilante step after withdrawal from the Union, to achieve complete sovereignty for these countries is to establish their own currency, free of France's influence. General Tiani, Niger's military junta, confirmed this, when he stated days later, that currency is a symbol of sovereignty. The AES member states are in the process of regaining complete sovereignty. It is no longer acceptable for our countries to remain France's cash reserves. In November 2023, finance ministers of each of these countries agreed to examine the possibility of establishing a monetary union, implying that the notion of creating a new currency has been considered. Everyone is observing with eager to see what the junta's next move will be in relation to money, because creating a new currency requires considerably more than simply printing out new banknotes. They will have to dismantle decades-old banking systems and replace them with better ones. Tyron Orthian, a non-monetary policy and West African State Union, believes that three important aspects must be considered before a multilateral currency can be launched and managed successfully. First macroeconomic and physical policy must be carefully coordinated, which means Niger, Mali, and Burkina Faso will need to closely coordinate their economic and budgetary policies in order to maintain currency value stability and remove trading balances. This will help to maintain economic actors' confidence while also promoting regional development. Growth, second strong monetary management institutions such as a common central bank must be established to manage the currency. This central bank must have the authority to implement and maintain a stable monetary policy, which will help to sustain the currency's monetary value, also addressing cyclical instability. Thirdly, the three countries must put in place a unified single market which is an extremely important step. The single market will ensure the free flow of goods, services, and labor, thereby accelerating economic growth and strengthening regional cooperation. The existing framework established by the West African Economic and Monetary Union gives significant benefits in this regard. Lastly, systems for monitoring and addressing crises should be put in place. Common reserve funds and currency exchange agreements for instance, could help mitigate external and internal shocks to the new currency. Currency swap in which two parties exchange funds in two different currencies, for a specified period of time at a predefined rate Catherine used to manage exchange rate risk and facilitate cross-border finance. While the globe waits for the next move by the military juntas, admiring their foresight, there may be setbacks, as some analysts have noted, 
but the benefits greatly outweigh the risks. Firstly, introducing a new currency will grant these countries entire independence. Secondly, establishing a larger monetary zone will promote increased trade integration and better resources allocation. Furthermore, it will also increase the country's flexibility when dealing with external partners. Thirdly, by entering a new monetary union, these three nations may likely get major benefits in term of trade integration, independence from external partners, decreased transaction costs and investor attraction. Captain Ibrahim Traore has made a brave significant step, which his counterpart as well as Africa as a whole welcomes. What are your fee in this? Tell us in the comment section below. Please do not forget to subscribe to our channel, enable the notification bell to get updates, like and share this video if you have not done so yet. Thank you for watching.